ideally, I think having someone who can devote their full attention to privacy issues is really important. Um, but it is kind of an ideal in, in a way, you know, the staffing and the resourcing uh, have a huge impact on what scope is practical to take on. Uh, but it works the other way too, I think. So, you know, if, if I'm thinking about this, to me, I guess the important thing just beyond the resourcing is making sure that the word privacy is somewhere, say in the name of an office or in someone's title to make sure that it has visibility and it's distinguished from other functions of an office that you might um, organizationally sit in. Um, again, just to make sure that, that, uh, that it's visible. It doesn't need to be chief privacy officer. I think in fact today it's much more common and with good reason, maybe a campus privacy officer university privacy officer. So does every institution in higher ed need to have such a role full time? And the answer is probably no. Uh, should large institutions, particularly residential ones or even online universities have such a thing that is as close to full time as possible? I would say absolutely. I think it's very important for academic institutions to have resources that are dedicated to privacy and establishing a, and managing a privacy program, but that should be done in a way that's aligned with the institution's structure and workflow. Uh, and that's what we're doing here at the University of Michigan. We're, we're not treating privacy like, uh, you know, a siloed operational function that just sits in one area. Uh, we hope that much like ethics and civil liberties, it just has to be part of how we work and interact with each other. Um, and it's such, a, it's difficult to have a static model that fits all academic institutions. For me, if there's, if there's anything that's really important about the role of the privacy officer, it's always to keep front and center the affected population, you know, whether it's students or, or, or anyone else. But I collaborate with academic units, with administrative units, with our Office for, of General Counsel, um, Office of Research. So uh, it's very much a holistic effort to address privacy in all different aspects uh, of our institution, from learning and education, to research, uh, to administrative functions, to compliance with laws and regulations. So um, we're, we're taking that approach to it. We need to think about privacy in, in a more multifaceted way. And I think we need to think about observational behaviors and privacy. And those observational behaviors can be electronic and digital observations of our behaviors. Um, so really just expand the conversation beyond uh, data privacy. And, uh, California Berkeley actually uh, term, uh, helped coin a term that I've used that's more around autonomy and privacy. So privacy of self, not just my data, but me. One of the key priorities, I think, should be to focus on appropriate use of data and strengthening underlying data governance practices. Uh, obviously, with the pandemic, uh, there was new treatment of data, new data collection, new ways of using data. Uh, these are not necessarily new practices that, that we need to put in place, uh, but we need to get better at enabling and promoting them. I mean, at every turn in our pandemic response, there's a privacy issue that comes up and a pretty complicated one usually. The fact of the matter is, privacy is now coming up in these conversations um, pretty routinely. And every time it does so, you know, it further socializes the notion that that's just part of what we expect to do. You know, on, a, on an ongoing basis, privacy is just part of the conversation. And I think ultimately that's what's so important is, is it's just part of the conversation. This video is brought to you as part of a data privacy research collaboration between Educause and Huron.